Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and you're here with Jupecraft Gamings, and basically, I am going to show you guys, um, basically this is going to be an introductory video on a tutorial of videos on how to use Game Maker Studio with Steam to make a fairly simple scrolling game. Um, I'm going to sort of, what I'm going to do in this video is basically teach you how to use it. It's very simple. Um, you might want to put this video on HD so you can kind of see what's going on. This is like a really simple way of making a game. You don't need any background gaming experience or patience in coding because it's really easy. I don't have patience to code or any coding experience at all whatsoever. And I made this game in like three days. Granted, it is very simple. It's a side scroller game. Eventually, we're going to have more tutorials on like more of a platform jumpy game, sort of like Mario style and, you know, just other games like that. Um,. This particular video is going to be an introductory, as I said, so I'm going to kind of run through the game real quick, sort of show you it. I'm going to, it's still in beta mode, I'm still working on it. Um, I'm going to sort of tell you about what's in store for the end product, which we're aiming for, so you have a kind of idea of what's going to happen in the end, as well as show you how to make a sprite or character, um, put it on a level or a screen and make it move, as well as kind of make it bigger or smaller after it's already created. So... Now with that said, I'm just sort of going to run through the game real quick, sort of explain some stuff that's going on, and we're going to go from there. So I'm going to hit start. This is our character. It's sort of animated. I'm also going to show you how to animate a sprite a little bit. And we've got other characters that we can sort of shoot at. They spawn through, like, Minecraft-style spawners. Up here is a little orange button that we're going to tick. Basically, it turns yellow. Just died and lost a life. That's why I was zapped back to the beginning. Uh, you lose a life by bumping into these guys. Um, the life counter and the score counter follow you. Oh crap, uh, not good at this game, clearly, and a lot of mobs are stacking up. Um, I'm just going to try to make it to the end. I'm probably going to die because I only have one life left, and I'm running really low on bullets. So, make a run for it. Um, once I get to the second level, I'll tell you a little bit about the game. That button, I probably should have showed you this before I pressed it, that button took away a bar that was right here blocking your entrance to the fourth level 2. Level 2 isn't really worked on. Um, it's just here to be level 2, but we're going to develop it in the process. I'm just going to quickly run through some things to come. Basically, um, first thing that I'm going to work on doing is getting this blood spots to despawn after a certain amount of time, so not there up, like, up there filling up your screen. Um, I'm going to make it so that monsters only spawn when you're in radius of the spotters. So, you, like, in level one, you can see the monsters start piling up. We want to sort of stop that. We want to give spawners sort of a health bar so that we can kill these spotters so they can stop spawning stuff. And make, you know, just generally different type of monsters. Monsters that only, ho that, like, walk around aimlessly and then only home in on you when they're so, when you're so close. As well as ones that can shoot back and have a better chance of killing you. And, you know, some fast ones and maybe make some that could walk through walls or something. You know, something cool like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and die and begin with showing you how to make it. So game over, back to title screen. You know, fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to open up. I've already sort of started because taking sprites for me, making sprites for me, takes a while and a lot of people you know might take less time so I have a sprite already made but I am gonna run through how to make a sprite in this program kind of quickly um, first you need to hit this pac-man symbol that you have to create a sprite and then you might want to rename it as well you do want to rename it SPR for sprite underscore and then I put player you can name it whatever you want really this one's going to be test because it's just kind of for your viewing and then you hit edit sprite now to make a fresh, clean sprite, you start out with creating a new sprite, and I wouldn't worry about the width and height right now. We'll deal with that later. Click OK, and double-click on this to make it appear so you can edit it. This is a program, basically like a version of Paint. You can use Paint, Photoshop, any other program you want. You can hand-draw it, scan it in. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is just for you know purposes. This is how I made mine. Basically, we took a color blue, um, made a circle sort of in the middle of the screen, Actually, gonna do that a bit smaller. Um, or make this a bit bigger. Now, once you've got a circle, I don't know why I was so picky on that. I took some white, some white, so that I can make a little eye. Oops. Just gonna make a little eye, and basically making like a face because I don't know Pac-Man. We had a Pac-Man icon to get to this, and I don't know. I just sort of like face added a little too much eye right there so I'm gonna just kind of take it off and then we're gonna add sorry I'm gonna add a little bit of a black pupil right there and I'm not good at making stuff look the same it takes me a lot of time so I sort of just use this copy tool to sort of select around the area and 
copy and paste another version right in just using those buttons. So there's some eyes. Um, next we're gonna just make a little mouth, just a little red mouth, and that's a bit big. It's like a Joker mouth, little red mouth, little nose. And uh, let's make green eyebrows, just because I think he should have eyebrows. They make him look a bit sinister. Um, doo -doo. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So there are his eyebrows. They look really uneven. Whatever. Um, to animate it, you can do lots of things to animate. You could like if you have a zombie, you can move its hands, or basically move and close eyes or open and close mouths. But I kind of like the idea of a bit of a like electricity glow around it. So I kind of went around the outside, just trying not to make a circle, not a circle, so I went as close to the edge as I kind of felt. And then I made it really thick and kind of bumpy out, not circular out here. Because, you know, this is basically what we're going to start off with. And I hit OK. So here's our first image. Now, you want to copy this image, and I basically did five other ones. You can copy it, make one, and then edit each individual image, and then copy that one and paste it, and then make, edit it, and then copy it and paste it and edit it. But for the sake of time and probably laziness, this is the way I did it, because it worked out fine for me. Um, so then I'd click this sprite, open it, make it bigger, not that big, and just sort of start trimming off little by little the outside blue, because I kind of want it to pulse, and then I'd click OK, open up the next image, kind of trim it off, and then if you want you can add more than five and you can make it get bigger again, or really whatever you want, it doesn't matter, and just click OK, and then click OK. Now, this is not going to be the sprite we're using, so I'm going to just show you this one real quick, because remaking it would take a lot of time. So I'm going to hit Edit Sprite, and you can click this little preview button to see how it would move on the speed of 30, 30 steps per second. So basically, this is not the speed for the game, but you could change it to see how it would look with different speeds and stuff like that, just for visual purposes. But anyway, we're going to keep it on 30, because I like it like that, and I like showing you how it's going to be. I'm going to click OK. Now... Now that we've got our sprite, we've got our sprite made, I'm just going to delete this other test sprite because it's not needed. And I'm going to show you how to turn it into an object. So to make it an object, it's really simple. You just hit this little ball button that says create an object when you scroll over it. And it brings up this window. You want to change the name to obj underscore player or whatever the second part of your name is here. Um, and then you want to add in your sprite by just clicking this little button and selecting your sprite. It's fairly simple. And next, you're, we're going to need to make it move. So this is really, really, again, very simple. Um, all you have to do is click Add Event. And I'm going to use Keyboard. And you click Keyboard, it gives you this option. Just click Left, and it appears over here. And then you want to drag the Move Fixed. Uh, it's like a little green snowflake is what it looks like to me. Drag it over into Actions and hit the left key, and we're going to do it at a speed of 10. You might want to try out different speeds and see what you like, depending on your game. And then we're just going to click OK. And then we're going to do that again, but keyboard right, drag in your snowflake, click the right arrow, at a speed of 10, click OK. Add event, keyboard, up, add in your snowflake, up, at a speed of 10, OK. Add event, keyboard, down, add a snowflake, 10, down, OK. So now we've got up, right, left, and down. Um, basically, just a, a side note, we also have key press, which some tutorials show you to use. Um, personally, when I use key press, um, for me, for this game that I'm making, it doesn't work. Because with key press, you'd have to hold down, like if you want to go up, you'd have to hold down the up button. And you'd be going up, because you'd just be holding it down. And then you'd have to let go of it completely, let a step go through, so like, you know, a little, like, little second. And then you'd have to press the next key, like down, if you want to do down. You couldn't just switch really fast from up to down. And that's an issue for me because, I don't know, that little bit of lag and then having to repress a key annoys me. So that's why I do keyboard. I find it it's smoother and easier. But now that we've got all of our key presses, we also need to do, or we need to make it so that once we press the up key, when we let go of it, it stops moving our character up. So we do the same thing, click add event. And we're going to hit key release and select left to start off at the top. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drag our snowflake into actions. And then we're going to hit the little square because that's just going to stop it from moving. And we're going to leave the speed at zero. And we're just going to do the same thing. So key release, right, dragging snowflake, square, OK. Key release, up, snowflake, square, OK. Key release, 
down, snowflake, square. Okay. Now, that's all you have to do. Now you've got a movable player, and it's all set. So, we need an area for our player to move around in. You can't have a player and no place for it to go. So, in order to make a room, just next to the object key, there's this little, like, whiteboard. And we're just going to click that, and it's going to create a simple room. Um, in other videos, I'll probably show you how to, like, make the room longer, wider, how to change the background. That's also to come with our game, is probably editing a nice background into it and stuff. But your player should be on display here. If not, you can select it with this little icon. Just select your player. And click anywhere in the room to put it in. You only want to put in one of your main players. But if you click again anywhere, it comes back and you can just left click it to delete it. It's fairly simple. And we're just going to put this in the middle of the room. And we're going to check and make sure all of our things work. So we hit play. Let Game Maker do its thing. Then it goes up, down, left and right. And it pulses. Looks fine. Now, when I made this... I got that all done, I got to this point, and I thought, well, I kind of would like it if my player was a bit bigger. I'd like to see it more. But I don't want to have to go through and remake it. Well, it's really simple to make it bigger. All you need to do is click on your player, uh, click Edit Sprite, go over here to the Transform button, and pick Stretch. Now, here, I'm going to make it, I don't know, 50 by 50 pixels. And you can type in, like, smaller or whatever. And I'm going to put it on uh, very good quality. I just get into the hobby of using very good quality. Um, basically, if you load in a small, really small, like, high-quality picture, and you don't pick very good quality, it's going to come out more pixelated than you might want. So just using very good, like, keeps it from getting too pixely. And I'm going to click OK, and there it, did, it made my sprite bigger. And we're just going to hit the little check mark for OK, and OK one more time. And then it's updated everything, so we can just hit play and see how it looks and change it accordingly. It all depends on your preference. Now I got a character, I like that side, it's fairly big and it moves around. And see, that was really, really simple, and it doesn't get much harder um, than that. I mean, there is some minor coding that you can do, but it really, really is simple. Um, in the next video, we're going to be doing more stuff, working on getting this um, into an actual game. But... This is going to be it for this particular video. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please hit like. It really helps out. Um, if you have any questions thus far, or if you ever have any real questions about anything, really, I'll do my best to try to answer them. Just leave a comment, and I'll probably leave a video response just as a warning because I suck at explaining stuff with typing out words. I'm way better at saying and showing you exactly what to do. So... But please give a lot of detail on your questions. Um, if not, I'll just ask you for more information. But thank you very much for watching. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. So, yeah. Bye.